bonjour à tous et aujourd'hui une nouvelle interview exceptionnelle pour Mathieu Castaga, puisqu'à l'occasion de la Paris Game Week et de leur première venue à Paris, nous retrouvons rien de moins que les community managers de Bywall Edmonton, Chris Casti, Jessica Marison, Holly Conrad et le community manager de France, Alexandre Mouro. So first we are very glad to uh, be here, it's an honor for us. So thank you all for being here. We already know a bit about Chris and Jessica, so I will let Holly introduce herself. Uh, then, if you would like to add a few words, you would be welcome. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm Holly Conrad. I'm a community ambassador with BioWare. <laughs> I have a theme song. <laughs> yeah, I can start over. It's cool, yeah. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I'm Holly Conrad. I'm a community ambassador with BioWare, and um, I'm also a special effects artist and cosplayer until I came dressed as Commander Shepard, obviously. And um, that's, I, you know, create monsters and costumes a lot of the time, and then I also help with community at BioWare, and get to go awesome places like Paris, where I've gotten to meet a bunch of other amazing cosplayers who have also shown up in awesome costumes, so it's pretty great. So we're here at Paris Games Week right now. Um, we're talking to all our Parisian and, and French fans right now. We're in the middle of a European tour of uh, England, France, and Sweden um, and the Nordics, meeting some of our most passionate fans in Europe, and we're really excited to be here. Um, and we're also really fortunate to have Alex here to translate, as well as know that when we leave, he is going to have really good care of our community, but we're always out um, talking. You can uh, find us on Twitter, on the BioWare Social Network, on Facebook, um, and if English is, you know, not your language of choice, feel free to message Alex and he will get the message to us. And I wanted to thank all of our amazing French fans and our French fans, like the amazing Mass Effect Saga. It's so, uh, um, so wonderful to help BioWare talk about our games with our fans. And we know we have great passionate fans here in France and wonderful websites like Saga. So thank you very much for helping us bring our games to our fans. So the first question would be, did you feel that Mass Effect was going to meet such a success at the beginning? I get to answer this because I've been with BioWare now 12 years with Jessica and Holly are newer to BioWare. Uh, I think when Casey Hudson, the project director of Mass Effect, uh, and Drew Carpitian, Preston Wotomniak, all of the, David Faulkner, all the leads for the Mass Effect franchise, along with Ray Muzik and Greg Zestrick, sat down and they started talking about what they were going to work on after they finished Knights of the Old Republic, they really wanted to work on a science fiction game and continue a, a single-player story-based role-playing game. They had designed the idea of the trilogy featuring Commander Shepard, and you always, when you start a new project, hope it will end up being popular. But uh, I think it has risen beyond even our expectations and has sold very well. We have incredibly passionate fans that are dedicated to Mass Effect, whether it is our novels, our comic books, our movies, and our games. So it is definitely very, very well. So the extended universe of Mass Effect might have the, pos the potential of the Star Wars universe. Uh, this is what is so uh, on the internet. Do you know if some creations, uh, especially writing fan creations, would be added and considered as an official Bioware content? So the kind of cool thing about Bioware games is there really is no canon option. Um, even in like some of our novels or our comic books, it's it's kind of an alternate path or one version of the way the story could go. Just because you're seeing that story does not mean that's the way we're saying. And, you know, that's the proof, that's the fact. Bioware, there are countless threads, there are countless different ways that the story could go. So even if we did, you know, do some official things in the future, movies, comics, other types of games, uh, there is no canon option. Um, we do take a lot of feedback in consideration. We don't accept fan submissions for content, but we do accept fan feedback. We really 
think a lot about what you're saying about what you enjoyed, what you didn't enjoy, what you want to see more of in the future. And that definitely goes into the future of how we develop our games and what we what content we make for you. So as a community manager, how do you cope with major problems such as the outcry for the enemy? As with any job, you're going to be having really amazing aspects of it, such as coming to Paris and meeting fans. And you're going to deal with, you know, the tough parts of your job. That that's the that's the reason you're there in the first place. And gathering fan feedback, even when it's negative, is part of our responsibility. Uh, I I don't think that it's our responsibility to deal with people who are uh, rude or harassing. That has no place in our community, and we are stamping that out. Um, but people who are just upset or disappointed. And something, absolutely, we want to hear about it, and we want you to tell us about it. So we we can definitely separate, you know, our personal feelings about how we feel about something and understand that not everyone feels the same way I might feel about something, and it's important for us to listen to that and to help. I, the only time that we don't tolerate something is when people get um, out of line or when they're unconstructive, saying something is bad, and then, you know, storming off is, is not going to help us make it better. It's just going to make us <laughs> So we we need this to be a partnership. If you want something um, different in the future, if you want a uh, another version, we need to know what it is that you want and why you want that so that we can kind of understand where we need to be going. Or we can understand what happened and what we can do in the future to change something. But, uh, you know, it's all part of being a community manager, and we really ultimately enjoy talking to our fans and bringing that feedback to the developers who make the game for the fans. If, if we didn't have the fans, we wouldn't be doing this. Uh, I think the, that we always remember that whether fans really like something or they really dislike something, it's important for us to remember as community managers because they are passionate about the game. If we do not live up to their expectation or if we exceed their expectation, they want to let us know what they like and what they dislike because they love Mass Effect. And that is a wonderful problem to have. It would be wonderful if what we made everybody loved and everybody thanked us and moved on, but that will never be the case. There are always people that want more or a different version or whatever it might be. But uh, as Jessica mentioned, we know that you are passionate about the games, and that is why we listen to you. Alexandre, comment la crise s'est-elle portée en France à propos de cette fin controversée Comment s'est passée en France J'ai envie de dire un petit peu moins similaire à tous les autres pays, en fait. Hein, parce que c'était, euh, c'est, on va dire, euh, une réflexion générale hein, qui avait eu en France. Hein. Bon, évidemment, ça n'avait pas du tout pris les, les envergures que c'était aux États-Unis. Hein, pour, pour on était un peu plus mesuré. Mais euh, non, non, moi ce que j'ai beaucoup aimé, en tout cas, c'est les Français, c'est qu'il y avait beaucoup plus de, de réflexion derrière, derrière ce débat. C'est qu'on cherchait vraiment à, à discuter à propos de différents aspects de la fin et tout ça. C'est moins brutal que certains discours qu'on pouvait trouver chez d'autres pays euh, qui sont. Euh, non, c'est du point. Et ils n'argumentent pas. Donc, euh, ce qui est, on va dire, pas très intéressant à lire euh, en soi, si vous ne trouvez pas, en tout cas, pour partager. Donc c'est vrai qu'au moins, il y avait, il y avait ça chez nous, c'est vrai qu'il y avait une, vraiment une, une vraie réflexion derrière, il y avait vraiment des, des échanges, il y avait ça qui était important. And did you receive some of the special cupcakes sent by the Reset Mass Effect movement? We did receive the cupcakes. Everything that was mailed to us or emailed to us or tweeted or Facebooked or um, PM to us on the Bioware social network, we did... We received all of it. Um, the cupcakes were donated to a youth shelter in Edmonton um, who very much enjoyed the, the cupcakes. Uh, but we absolutely get everything that is sent to us. And it's, and it's great for us to see that the studio are listening to us. Thank you for that. So in the community, we were all stunned by the Leviathan on the one hand and by Earth and Retaliation on the other hand. Uh, retaliation that introduces a new concept of DLC. How do you plan to surprise us in the future without thinking in your overstatement? 
uh, the existence of the mediations was set a surprise for us? Well, uh, there are more surprises to come. The next DLC is called Omega. We have uh, shown that a little bit here at Paris this week with uh, Arya Talok, the warlord of Omega, uh, deposed prime boss. Omega had taken it away from her, and now she and Commander Shepard are going to go take it back. We do not want to give away too much of the story. We want to let our fans experience it for themselves and enjoy the surprises as they come. There is one definite surprise that fans have been asking for since the start of Mass Effect 1 that finally appears in Omega. Uh, so we are going to enjoy seeing fans finally encounter that character for the first time. But uh, other than that, we have said that there is more stories to be told in the Mass Effect universe, so you never know what will come next. Speaking of the FM, uh, do you think there will be some content about them and the other titles in books or comics or even films? There could be, definitely. We have um, a lot of future stories that we want to tell. Um, in a blog post a little while ago, Aaron Flynn announced that we definitely are going to be making more Mass Effect video games. Um, and who knows what kind of stories we might tell in those. The Mass Effect universe, the best thing about the, the series is what an expansive lore and world and, and you know, megatropolis. Like, it's, it's a lot. And we're definitely not done telling stories. Are we going to discover other unseen races or new places? Or go back in two places we've seen in the other episodes that are not available in Master 3 in the next DLC? The sky is the limit to what we can do with this universe. Not even the sky, actually. The big, like, the end of the galaxy. And not even that galaxy because there may or may not be map relays, so. The future is limitless. So the regular reports of Admiral Hackett during the multiplayer events are sketching a RP plot. So can we hope for some interaction between the solo player and the multiplayer, uh, such as the DLC, so, solo DLC sorry, that could be, have been introduced by Discovery and the multiplayer? Um, that's defi definitely possible. Um, the blog post from Admiral Hackett came about because of um, an alternate reality game, ARG, that we created. Um, so along with the Mass Effect launch, that was a partnership between the community team and um, some of the writing team. They made kind of a War of the World uh, Twitter fest that involved Emily Wong. And we realized that, you know, that kind of role-playing experience is so much fun for fans that we decided to continue it with doing blog posts and doing uh, future ARGs. We did uh, a really fun one for Leviathan with a, you know, kind of zany character called Bernard Plim, who was a conspiracy theorist, and, you know, it turns out he's right about the whole thing the whole time, uh, so it wasn't too big of a conspiracy. So, um, we are really interested in transmedia and different ways we can tell stories. I think that's one of the great things that we have with partners like Funimation and with um, uh, Dark Horse Comics and Legendary Films is... is and we have all these different ways that we can tell stories. So it, it, the, it's not out of the realm of possibility that, um, you know, multiplayer and single player will be tied together. But we do realize that not everyone wants to play, um, you know, both experiences. So we definitely don't want anyone to miss out on something because of that. So we'll, we'll balance the fine line. So we play one day all together, um, multiplayer party, please? Uh, we should definitely play a multiplayer together. I play a vanguard, so I'm just warning you, I get killed a lot. <laughs> I mean, I, I play um, an Asari addict because it makes me feel powerful. <laughs> so, as long as you can play with that, we'll be fine. Well, I'm going to spoil the party. I don't play the multiplayer. I know, shock! Oh! But it's true, there are the multiplayer is great, and I have played the multiplayer, and I, I do enjoy it, but I am a single-player gamer. I, I play single-player games, and the multiplayer is a wonderful option for those people who enjoy it, but there are people like me who enjoy single-player story-based games, and so uh, I will watch 
you all play, but uh, I probably will not join in. Plus, you don't kill me. Eh, écoute, qu'est-ce qu'il y a J'ai pas envie de te dire. Trop bien sentinelle, oui, ou n'importe quoi. Tiens, il va bien débloquer un petit un petit azari pour pour faire plaisir. Non, pas encore. Malheureusement, je suis comme vous et je n'étais pas très chanceux avec les packs, pour le dire. Euh, pour ne pas dire beaucoup, euh, mais j'en ai ouvert pas mal. Euh, J'ai euh, eu beaucoup d'humains. C'est très intéressant. Donc, du coup, j'ai plein de humains avec moi. Mais euh, bon, ça, c'est fait. C'est bien. Mais effectivement, au niveau des rages, je ne suis pas très chanceux. Par contre, je n'étais pas mal sur les armes. Donc, je m'en porte plutôt bien sur ce, ce point-là. I love the, the multiplayer experience because it's a, it's a ton of fun. It's amazing. I was, like you, Chris, a single player most of the time, and I tried a little bit. I was skeptical, and it was very amazing. So it's so fun. <laughs> and I would like to thank Bioware for the representation of the Sense Tech relationships uh, in the whole field, but in Mass Effect 3 in particular. The pod has no surprise that a lot of fun when Cortez comes out as gay. And the relationship with trainer is very humble and simple, so that was very audacious. And we know that Bioware had troubles with this topic, especially with uh, the old Republic. So how did you come up with this idea to introduce such relationships in the game? Um, in an article a few months back by our co-founders, Ray Mazika and Greg Zestruck, they, they talked a little bit about diversity in their games. And for them, and for Bioware as a whole, it's, it's not a political issue. It is a simple, um, you know, this is the, the way the world is, and this is the way that we want to also represent the diversity in our games. We have um, options, and we want to keep providing those options because we know that, that that's important for people. And so you know, it, it's a heated issue in politics. It's a heated issue in society. But for Bioware, it was a simple, um, it was a simple decision that this is a preference for players. This is an option, and the diversity exists in our, our fan base, and we need to also be supporting that. Um, the the gay romances were, I, I think, really very well done because they were multifaceted, like everything else. Um, someone talked to me at a convention about being um, disabled and how much they saw themselves in Joker, not because he was disabled, but because he was so much more than that. And I think that that's the same can be said with our, our same-sex romances. Trainer is not just a lesbian. She is a soldier. She's an analyst. She is incredibly intelligent, and she also happens to really fancy women. And that's the way it was written. It wasn't, you know, a stereotypical defining feature. They, they're not one-sided characters. And you can see that with all of our characters, no matter what their orientation is or no matter who they love. And I think that that's what people come back to Bioware games to experience is a, a, a range of characters with a distinct set of emotions, preferences, orientations, and choices for the player. Uh, I enjoyed a lot the face modeling of Ivan Strowski <laughs> as Miranda. So do you plan to use such a method in future games? Well, it's certainly possible. Uh, we use a number of face models. Randy McNeer was the voice of Samara, uh, Yvonne Strahovski for Miranda, Mark Vanderloo for Male Commander Shepard. Uh, so it is certainly something that works well when the character can recognize the, the you know, actor that portrays the race. But uh, we also have a lot of you know, different aliens. We have uh, you know, custom created faces as well. So it really comes down to what suits the character best. So as a player, and not as a community manager, what would have been your perfect dream ending? Oh, um, well, actually, I mean, I, I honestly, I, I wanted Shepard to die, because, and for my ending, I mean, even though I got, I bawled like a child, and I like, because my, I romance Garrus in all 15 of my games. <laughs> uh, yeah. 
So I have a little bit of an obsession. But, um, I mean, I loved in the extended cut when you got to, you know, talk to your followers some more and things like that. But I couldn't imagine Shepard having a normal life at all. I mean, after seeing what she'd seen and doing what she'd done and now having, like, all those nightmares and craziness, I could, just couldn't imagine having her having a normal life. But I was totally sadistic about it because I brought Gareth along just so we'd die together. I was like, no, no, you can't have life without me. You're just going to die with me. But then I realized he survived, and I was like, oh, no, I'm really sad. So we'd have just died together and just blown up a reaper at the same time. That would have been my perfect ending because I'm evil. Um, for me, I have, I have two kind of canon playthroughs for me. Um, one is where I took synthesis, and that was my original choice. And I have another where I choose the destroy ending, and I, I the destroy ending one is is one that I play for fun because of you know just some some like really cool interpretations that have come out of um, people discussing multiple levels of meaning with the ending. And I, I really did like the idea that, you know, maybe the Reapers were trying to manipulate you and that the correct answer was destroy. Um, so that's one interpretation that I have. My, my other interpretation is synthesis. Um, and I just, I, I just thought when I was playing it, I, I had no idea how it could turn out. Um, and the developers were very kind to shield me from being spoiled. I've already been spoiled, but... For Dragon Age, so I already know how how that's going to turn out. But they were they, they were very kind. They shielded me, so I really had no idea what I was coming up against. And um, I remember that last conversation with Anders. I just I like I totally like lost it after you know he he was like he did good trial, and I was like, oh my god, you were like a father figure to me. I just I did not even realize this until right this moment, and you know that was so powerful. And for me. That that was that was the, the strongest point of the entire trilogy for me, and and so I think that was the big thing that I took out of the ending. And then um, you know, for my my two different playthroughs, the synthesis and the um, destroy kind of wrapped up loose ends. But I kind of agree with Holly. For I was I was kind of like my shepherd is messed up. She there's no way she can be normal. I would not, I, you know, I would not trust her to have children. Um, so, um, unfortunately, there are no, there are no uh, blue baby ideolations for me. Um, I know some people did have those. And I think that there's enough left open in some of the endings that it is still possible for those people um, to imagine it for themselves. But for me, I imagine that my shepherd had she lived, which in many cases she did not live, um, if she had lived, she would kind of be, like, a little bit Zaid, except Garrus would be with her and they would be shooting cans. That's that's what they'd be doing. Well, this is going to reveal a little, probably more than I should about me, but uh, I wanted a really dark and bleak ending. I, I wanted, you know... Burnt, burnt husks with planets behind. I wanted no survivors. I wanted all the party at some point to die, and maybe glorified in you know wonderful ways. But I didn't want anybody to survive, and I simply wanted the Reapers leaving, going, "Yeah, we're done here. There's nothing left," and flying off. So um, I, I love the ending that we came up with. But if anything, I thought all three were a little too happy. <laughs> That's why, that's why it's called Evil Chris Priestley. Et bien, écoute, je te dire, effectivement, la première fois que je jouais à Mass Effect 3, je vois bien que c'est la fin avec la PS3, je suis totalement totalisé. Je ne savais pas quoi prendre, je me suis dit, qu'est-ce que ça va donner Je suis arrivé l'air, il était tellement intense en termes de présentation, je me suis dit, putain, je ne faisais même pas de marché, je suis déjà plus sur un pas, je vais casser le verre et je suis pas mal tombé dans le truc, enfin bref, je suis fait la totale. Et au final, il y a une fois qui m'a assez correspondu en fait, et c'est la synthétique, tout simplement, ça du milieu. Et pourquoi Parce que c'est... Je ne serais pas expliqué, c'est super subjectif, c'est vraiment en tant que joueur, c'est quelque chose qui m'a parlé, qui m'a touché. Ne serait-ce que quand... Spoiler Ne serait-ce que quand je parle de tombe il y, a, il y a vraiment une, une intensité, quelque chose dedans, quand tu vois euh, effectivement euh, disparaître comme ça. Et euh, 
voilà, et ça, ça, ça m'a... C'est terrible, 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 c'est terrible
Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the guy with the fake uh, with fake turf. I'm gonna explain. <laughs> do you plan? Do you plan? Sorry. Do you plan to create a tabletop RPG masterclass? Ah, uh, not currently. Uh, there was a tabletop RPG made for the Dragon Age series by our friends at Green Moon. Uh, so it's theoretically possible that a uh, role-playing game, a tabletop one for Master could be made, but nothing we can announce currently. The second one goes to Metroid Prime. <laughs> Will it be some conference that will take place after Master Effect 3 in the extended universe, in comics, in books, or in movies? Um, it's not out of the question, but it is highly unlikely because there is no canon ending to Mass Effect. You're, the universe would vary greatly depending on, you know, if you chose Synthesis and everyone ascended to this, you know, higher state versus Destroy, where the Mass Effect relays may or may not still be intact, or Control, where everything was rebuilt, but there are still Reapers around. So it would be incredibly difficult. Uh, to do something after that, um, because again, our our number one priority is is saying you know that there is no one ending that is canon. There's no one right ending or or a path that we want people to take. Um, again, the team is really good at pulling off difficult things, so they might find a way to overcome that challenge and make something after the events of Mass Effect Three, but. Um, we hope that fans will think a lot about uh, the Mass Effect universe and maybe other directions that we could go in. Miss Sarah again, the extension of the universe is amazing. So don't you fear a degradation due to this diversification and what is coming next? Uh, I think BioWare is very cognizant of who we partner with and where we go with our franchise. Uh, it's very important for us that when we select uh, a movie company like Funimation or Legendary Studios, when we work with uh, comic book partners like uh, Dark Horse Comics, that they are going to treat our source material well something that is made. So while, yes, there is a, a possibility that somebody could make something and, and uh, it would not be a good product, Bioware works very hard to make sure that that does not happen. A question from Leila. <laughs> what did you inspire for the creation of the cycle of the Reapers? Um, unfortunately, none of us can really answer that. Um, that's definitely a question for the writer's pit. Um, we, we have a lot of, you know, Mac Walters, Drew Carpition, um, all of our writers are, are very talented, and I'm happy to take that question back and see if maybe we could, you know, write a blog post about it sometime or, you um, ask them and, and get that back in a message at somehow, which is the awesome thing about us is we can go back and ask them. So um, let's put that one on hold, and we will ask, and I'll try to get that answer back to you. Inspiration, what are you talking about? The Reaper thread is real. <laughs> um, last question for, from Sal. Uh, will Omega be an available place at the end of the DLC? Um, so Omega is available to play at any time in the game after you're finished with the Mars mission, but before you start kind of the London mission. Um, so don't play and go into like the Cerberus base, for instance, because then you're like starting the end of the game. Uh, but any t other time other than that, you can play Omega, and um, if you've already finished the game, your game creates a, le a legacy save. Um, so go into that legacy save, and it'll pop you back into uh, before the server space, and you'll see that after you download Omega, it's an available mission that you can start. And will we be able to go back to Omega until the end of the DLC? Sorry, yes, um, just like with any of our DLCs, you can go back and, and explore and things um, such as Le Leviathan. And Holly, just like that, you're both cosplayers. And what would be your advice to a cosplay beginner? Um, my advice to any cosplay player beginner is to just find a character that you're passionate about 
like, whatever character you're passionate about from whatever franchise, find something that you love, and then find out how to make it. Don't think about, well, I'm going to make this because whatever. Think about what you love, and then go out there and read blogs, ask other cosplayers, find groups, find out how to make what you want to be after you've decided what you like, what you're passionate about. I mean, for me, obviously, I love Mass Effect, so I had... I'd made armor before, but never something elaborate as this when I made my first suit. And so I asked around, found friends, and ended up learning how to do it while I was actually making my first suit. And of course, this is like my seventh iteration of it. But the first time, you know, it had tweaks to work out. And don't be afraid to mess up. Just do it because you love it and have a good time and hang out with your friends. I think uh, the cool thing about cosplay, um, unless you're in a costume contest, is it's not a competition. Um, everyone is generally really excited to see whatever you've done. So, you know, your your first costume is not going to be the best thing you do. And, you know, you should hope that it's not. You should hope that you keep getting better and you keep improving and you learn new skills. And you meet people who, you know, you will say, okay, well, I'm really good at making guns, so I'll make you a gun. And you think you're really good at sewing, cause so could you sew me a waistcoat? Could you sew me, a, you know, a, a vest or something? And, you know, it's great, and, and find people, because there will be a time when you were really, like, sad in your garage when something broke or didn't work, and you're going to need friends who can be like, it's okay, that happened to me. So, um, there's a really cool kind of a uh, Mass Effect and Dragon Age community of cosplayers out there. You can um, find them on DeviantArt, you can find them on Facebook, on Twitter, uh, you know, feel free to tweet at me and Holly, and... We'll be happy to be your cosplay friends. Um, yes, we'll be your spirit guide. So just, you know, just get started and just make something. And it's okay whatever quality level it's at because I think once you put on a costume, I've never met someone who wore a costume and was like, yep, this is absolutely not for me. Like, after you make it, you're pretty like, yeah, I think this is, this is fun and I'm going to keep doing it. So, so just get, get out there and do it and, and – um, Find people who will support you and, and cheer you on. What will your N7 day look like? Um, I think we're getting back very briefly before N7 day. So my N7 day will probably be uh, replaying Leviathan because I broke my computer and then possibly falling asleep from jet lag. <laughs> Um, I'm definitely going to tune in to uh, some of the Levi's, the, the Leviathan, um, the Omega, uh, you know, Google Hangout parties that people are having and live streaming while they're playing. Um, Mike Gamble is probably going to be streaming something, so I'm going to listen to see what he has to say. And I'm going to be, of course, online talking to fans. Maybe I'll stream something. Would you stream with me? Yeah, I'll stream with me. Yeah, we'll make same guacamole and have a party. Will you stream with us? We'll stream. We'll all have fun. We'll make same guacamole. It, which means you might be, like, awake during, like, Paris time. So you can celebrate N7 during Paris. And then the U.S. folks just, you know, they don't get a party. Yes. Yes. But we'll have, we'll post, we'll make some Mass Effect inspired drinks, have same guacamole, and, and we'll have a good time. What about you, Chris? I think that sounds great. Uh, it is a global event, so we're going to be watching you know, all of our fans around the globe as it, you know, in seven days starts to hit in Australia and start to move all its way around the world. Uh, we'll be online. We'll be on Twitter. We'll be on Facebook on the Bioware social network uh, engaging with our fans. So it's going to be a great thing. Well, Chris can and Alex can, but the rest of us can. Alex, how are you celebrating on seven day? Um, 
Could you please tell our community, Master Pestaga, a word, please? The word is yellow. Uh, I'm Commander Shepard, and Mass Effect Saga is my favorite website on the Citadel. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, oh, in English. You said English. I was going to try to butcher something in French. Zemmour? Mass Effect Saga? Right? Wait, Pia? No, Pia Mota. Frickin' frick! It's Lily Day, Commander Mass Effect Saga? Yes. No, I want to say I adore you. You adore. You, uh, you look at me like I was an idiot. <laughs> yes. J'adore. J'adore. J'adore Mass Effect Saga. Yeah? J'adore Mass Effect Saga. <laughs> Shepard. J'adore Mass Effect Saga. Shepard. I can't beat that. That's, just, that's awesome. But uh, Mass Effect Saga is a great site. More people should be visiting it. So it is said in the entire trilogy that shitballs can dance. And we got shitball here. So please, can you show us? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for this was wonderful, wonderful experience. I hope you're gonna see us soon in Paris too, one day. <laughs>